I wanted to do a video. One of the things that, that I have a heart to do is to share with people a little bit about what I've been through and some of the things that I've learned. So knowing that fountain pens are actually on the upswing and they're getting more and more popular, I um, wanted to share a little bit uh, and maybe some advice for the newbie. Uh, I didn't get a lot of advice from anybody, and I learned a lot of things on my own, and I just wanted to pass some of those along. So some people have asked me, some friends and family who know that I've kind of taken up this hobby, um, <clears throat> how did you get interested in fountain pens to begin with? And, you know, everybody has their own story as to how or why. For me in particular, I used to work with a guy who was a, became a really good friend of mine, and we knew each other for decades, and we hung out an awful lot. And uh, he had a fountain pen, and he used to like to use it at work. I saw it, I tried it, I kind of liked it, and I went out and I bought one of my own. As a matter of fact, I had just finished flushing it out um, and cleaned it up some, and I've got it sitting here in my tray, and so maybe I'll uh, throw it back together real quick and, and show you. It doesn't have to be expensive if you wanted to get started in fountain pens. I think I found this one at a Walmart, um, and I only paid a few dollars for it. It's this little, little sucker right here. It took cartridges only, and when I stopped being able to buy cartridges at that store or wherever I was shopping, then I just stopped using Using it and chucked it into a box until I pulled it out um, just recently. I'm talking 20 some years later and tried to use it and uh, finally got it working after all that time. Um, but everyone's different, you know. And I had that pen. I kind of liked it when I stopped being able to find cartridges for it. I went ahead and uh, you know I bought another one. And uh, what I did was uh, it, the pen that served me well for decades. Um, I've become a fan of Waterman pens over the years, and um, and that's just from using them. Every single Waterman pen I've touched I've loved so far. Uh, but this is their, the Phileas pen. I may have shown that on my previous video. It's, um, you know, it's not an incredibly expensive pen. It's just a, a plastic. Um, and it, it's, it came in a little gift set that I found, I don't know, at a Michaels or a, a, a craft store. And it came with a bottle of ink. Um, matter of fact, uh, I have a bottle of Waterman ink that I just recently picked up in a different color. But, you know, I had a little bottle like this. And uh, I went through an entire bottle of ink just in this one pen because it's the only pen I really had that worked. Um, and it came with some cartridges ink cartridges and I also uh, got it with a little converter so if you don't know what a converter looks like um, it's you know one of these things here that you put ink in and it goes inside the pen and it just draws up um, ink out of a bottle so you don't always have to have cartridges that's not the right one it goes to um, it goes into this one here so you would basically have it and you would uh, just twist it would draw ink up so that's kind of how I got into uh, fountain pens a little bit in this particular pen you know I, I when I first ran out of ink um, you know I set it aside I'd use it for a while when I'd run out I just set it aside uh, and then I wouldn't refill it like I should and we always had ballpoint pens around finally I got tired of it and I said every so often I take it out resurrect it use it um, and uh, then I ran out of my Waterman ink and eventually I invested in another bottle like this and this one is by hero and it's a blue black uh, whereas I had black previously I think <coughs> and <clears throat> it, I'll get to in a little bit um, some advice about inks because uh, not all inks are equal and not all pens are equal so um, I just had one for decades and I only had the one you know, they say, beware the man with only one gun, uh, because he's probably very proficient with it. Well, I was kind of that way about my fountain pen. I knew how to use my pen, and, you, and knew how to take care of it somewhat, although I was a little lax about it. Um, and then I decided, uh, all right, I'm going to get more into pens, and I bought some more a little bit by bit. Someone's asked me, is it expensive? <clears throat> well, yes and no. I know people who spend a lot of money on pens. I've got some pens for which I spent more money than others. Um, it can be, but it doesn't have to be if you just want to get started. Um, even if you've been in ink pens for a while or fountain pens. Um, my advice on this, start with cheaper pens. Basically, find out what you like and work your way up. Um, shooting. One of my first hobbies was to, because I ha I owned one handgun, um, and I got very proficient with it, very accurate with it. 
um, wanted to see if I wanted to get more into it. <clears throat> so I bought another one. And I bought one that seemed familiar uh, in its controls, just a miniature version of what I had already had. Um, so I went ahead and got it and got very good with it. And I know how to tear it apart, how to clean it and all that. So then I got another. Well, they're not equal. Um, you know, a 380 is not the same as a 45. Although I like them both. And I've been known to carry both. It's a matter of personal preference. Today, I was carrying a 380 on my hip. Um, and I, I like that particular handgun, though it's not my favorite, but it is my favorite for concealed carry kind of thing. Not all pens are equal. I got some pens I keep on my desk that I like to use all the time, and others I prefer to take with me if I'm traveling. And the reason why is because if I lose a $4 pen, I lose a $4 pen. So what? If I lose a $100 pen, um, I'm going to feel the sting of that a little bit more. Uh, so, I rotate my pens. Uh, I don't use the same pen every time. Um, but I'm finding more and more as I go along, there are some pens I like, some pens I like less. I like some of the cheaper pens that I've gotten just fine, and I have no problem with them. And I'll continue to use those on a regular rotational basis. Some of my more expensive pens, I'll continue to use some of those because they are nice and I've got some money uh, tied up in them, um, but even some of my more expensive pens, they're not necessarily comparable. I'll share a little bit with that. So, you know, I started with that cheap generic one that I showed you. Um, I went and bought the other than that in a gift set. That, that was a $40 pen, so I took a step up from a couple of bucks up to a $40 pen then. Uh, well, then when I decided I wanted to actually look at more fountain pens, I only spent a couple of bucks here or there. I'll give you a couple of examples. Um, one of the first ones I ordered. This is a Jinhao 450. It's a Chinese-made pen. I ordered it off from eBay for like two dollars. Had to wait for a while for it to show up, and it came, um, you know, eventually by China Post. And I filled it up with that same um, cheap ink that I got. See, keep in mind this Waterman that I had. It would eat any ink I put into it. It didn't matter what it was, it, it would work. This particular pen, put it the same ink in, eh, <clears throat> it did okay. It wasn't, it, and, um, that's when I decided, let me find some other pens, see what else I like. So, you know, if you wanted to go cheap Chinese pens, fine. Here's another Jinhao. I think this is a Jinhao 750, um, and I've got like a green ink in it, and it, it actually works out fairly well. Uh, a cheap pen, a Pretinum, uh, Platinum Preppy. Some people don't like them. They think, nah, it's just a cheap plastic piece of garbage. You know what? It actually writes pretty well. I use one every single morning on a log book that I keep every single day. Um, and that's not so bad. I had another one that I had ordered. I ordered this one like on Amazon.com. It was a beautiful pen. And I just ran across it while surfing on Amazon. Um, and someone's, this was being sold as an East Vita model. Well, you get it, and it says right on it, Jin Hao. Go figure. Probably could have gotten it cheaper on eBay had I known. Um, and I looked and I, so, sure enough, I, that's a Jinhao 650. Um, so, you know, all those pens that I just showed you were only two, three, four dollars delivered to the door. Not that expensive. So it's not that big a deal. So if you like them, you, you, you use them, you don't like them, no big deal. No real big investment lost. Um, here's an example a Lamy Safari in the new petrol color that they introduced this year. I like it. It writes pretty good. I have no complaints about it. But this can be, depending upon where you get it, um, 30s in the $40 range. Um, whereas Jin Hao makes a 599 pen that actually performs fairly well. I've given some of those away. As a matter of fact, I arranged uh, to buy from Singapore from a guy um, about three dozen just so I can get them and give them away to people as well as to have some spare parts. Um, but, uh, you know, go figure. Uh, the Jinhao 599 writes, I think, fairly well. I gave one away just yesterday. The lady who got it really liked it. I filled it up, actually, with this um, this Waterman Serenity Blue because it was a blue-colored pen, and she was quite happy. So, you know, a pen for $1.12 shipped to my door. 
or um, the the deal that I made for seventeen dollars, I'm getting about three dozen pens. <laughs> I mean, come on. And those are to me giveaways, throwaways, no big deal. So, um, you know, I you know I've gone up from there. I've tried different pens. I saw ones that I really like. Don't make some of the mistakes I've made. Here's here's one thing that I would advise. Like I see an old Schaefer uh, pen that somebody had put on on online for sale, and I went ahead and bought it. Um, the good thing that came out of this pen is that I learned a little bit about fountain pens and how they work and how to make little repairs to them. Um, this is, I meant to talk about this later, but things that I've learned, I don't particularly care for lever action pens. You know, here's the, um, the barrel of the pen, and it's actually got this little lever. You can probably see it like this. It's a little lever, and what that does is it squeezes down on this ink sac. You can probably even hear that. See that? See, and, that and that's one of the things I don't like about these particular pens is it takes an awful lot to clean them and I have been flushing and flushing and flushing and flushing and trying to clean up this pen. Um, and still some of that black ink inside. And it was a pretty good ink though, by, by the way. Um, it, I think it was uh, Noodler's Bad Black Moccasin Ink. Um, I think was in this one. I'm not sure. It's either that or it was in my um, my Edelbrook, um, which I really like as well. But uh, by and large, I don't like ones with um, the aspirator, uh, like where it's got a squeeze bulb, like this one here. Uh, this one here um, was supposedly a uh, Parker. Um, I think I may be wrong. Um, and it's got this little thing that goes over the top, which is why I don't really like. Uh, the Pilot Metropolitan converter that it comes with because I don't like the ones where you get a squeeze bulb in it. Um, that's not really what I, I... I've had really bad success with some of those. Um, especially that one that I told you about that is like a 1947 um, pen. And, and I tried to restore it as best I could. However, the one exception I found to that in Esterbrook. I got this fairly inexpensively online. It was in excellent condition. It needed a new pen sack. So I, I, I went online and I started Googling and I found um, somebody's website that had a step-by-step -step on how to do it. What they didn't tell you though is that you need to talc up um, that the little bulb, that squeeze bulb, and you need to uh, put talcum powder on it before you put it back in. Uh, but it still works even without it. So it's not a must-have. but um, I've inked this sucker up twice now. Matter of fact, that's what I took all the notes on, uh, with. Uh, and I filled up that Esterbrook and I started to write with it. It supposedly has a real fine nib on it. I was like, I'm not going to like this. I don't like fine nibs personally. I like more medium nibs. And I was shocked uh, how well it did. Um, you know, these are some of my notes that I took with it. And I had and I ran out of ink while writing this out. So I had to, uh, to go ahead and uh, you know, re-ink it up. So people have asked me, you know, where do, where do you order pens? You can order them anywhere. Now, I've been on eBay pretty much since the website started. Uh, 2001, I've been a member of eBay since then. I've bought hundreds and hundreds of things on eBay. Um, you know, I've got like 550 some ratings of just feedback that's been given uh, to me as a purchaser on eBay over the years. Um, but you got to be careful on eBay, caveat emptor, when you uh, use eBay. Um, but also, I've been to Goulet Pens, Isle of Pens, not real impressed with Isle of Pens, uh, you know, Mass Drop, uh, Amazon.com, the iPen Store. And I, here's what I recommend Google, WebSurf, find places that other people may have been or have recommended, and try them for your own self. Go to their website, you know, penhero.com. And that's what actually one of the first sites I found when I was checking out fountain pens with Pen Hero. Come to find out, the guy's not far from where I live, and I'll probably run across him at the upcoming uh, pen show uh, for the Triangle area because I live in the Raleigh Durham Triangle uh, area. So I'll probably run across him and some other folks at that pen show, as well as some guys who do reviews that I've been uh, reading up online. So you know, you can look on eBay just to see what they're going for. Just be careful of what you buy because. 
You know, I've gotten burned a few times on eBay, but that doesn't keep me away from it because actually I have some fantastic finds on there as well. I've got some bids in right now on some new pens. And that's where I buy some of my ink, some of my supplies. The Waterman ink I showed you, I got that on eBay. The uh, That Cheap Hero ink, I got that on eBay. Um, a lot of the pens, most of them, I got. I got on eBay, and, but I'm also very patient. I don't overpay. I refuse to overpay. I'll gladly get outbid in an auction because I'm not going to go above a certain point. You want it that bad? Fine, get it. Uh, sometimes I'll find a really good deal um, on one of uh, a local dealership. A lot of my supplies, gouletpens.com. I bought a lot of supplies that way, and I'll talk to you more about that. So. Yeah, just the other day, somebody had asked me if I had any recommendations on starter pens. Uh, she had found an article um, on the Pilot Metropolitan and wanted to know uh, some of my recommendations. And, you know, that was actually a pretty good recommendation. When I was thinking about get, buying more pens, and after I'd already purchased some Chinese pens, tried them out, some of the inexpensive pens, um, I had put it out on Facebook to my friends. Hey, anybody have any uh, recommendations on fountain pens? And... Uh, somebody had recommended two pens to me and both of which I now own and now I understand why they were recommended because um, he had done his research found that these two were worth owning so I uh, talked to you about the Pilot Metropolitan great pen anywhere between 12 and 15 bucks great investment I don't like the little aspirator filler it comes with so I use ink cartridges in this for right now and I ordered a uh, converter that you can use, you know, the little screw type converter, rather than having that little squeeze aspirator thing. I, I, I do not like those at all. Um, a lot of people think this is just a cheap piece of garbage, but the Waterman Culture, or Culture, however it's supposed to be pronounced. I told you that I like Waterman pens, and every time I've touched a Waterman pen and used it, I've loved it. Um, I've got this one here that, that I've... They're 20 bucks, maybe. I think I paid this twenty bucks for this one because it um, ha, you know has the American flag design. It's Harley Davidson and um, has my wife's name on it. So I figured, what the heck, I'll I'll spring for that. And it was a Waterman. Figured I'd give it a shot because it wasn't that far off from this one, and it didn't say what kind it was when I bought it. All it said was Harley Davidson pen. So I figured if it's a Phileas like this, I know that these right now on eBay are going for fifty to eighty dollars. Well, I paid forty for this twenty years ago. So I figured alright if I can get a forty dollar pen um, for twenty and they're worth eighty, what the heck I've got it in my collection. Alright, it's a step down from that. It's a culture or culture, whatever they're called. And it works great. <laughs> so uh, I was surprised. Uh, it was one of those things. Um, the Preppy Platinum, I, t I showed you that earlier. You know, you can get this on eBay um, for like four or five bucks, four dollars or so. And then when I went to go buy more cartridges for it, I found uh, some sellers that had cartridges and then somebody else had cartridges plus another one for about the same price. So I got two of these. Uh, and I keep one in my, my kit. Uh, or one of my collection and I use it regularly uh, for rotation and the other I use every morning in, in a log uh, log book that I keep. Um, okay, I told you a little bit about the Jin House. Um, the Jin Hao 599, I don't have one right here with me because I gave it away, like I told you. Um, and I've got some more coming. But um, those aren't so bad. I was surprised. The Jin Hao 159, which I guess is their answer to the Mont Blanc 149, uh, this pen here is actually fairly nice. I can't complain. Big cigar-shaped pen. Um, it's probably one of their nicer pens. I like it. I use it. I still use it. The Jin Hao 750, I showed you a little bit about that earlier. This one happens to be in stainless steel. Not bad. I still use it. The 450 I had a little bit of a problem with, only because the, uh, the nib feed, um, you know, I, I've taken this out. I've cleaned it up. Um, and it still won't write correctly. It just stopped writing. And I've been tinkering with this one for a while. So, um, got it writing for a little bit. Then it garbaged up again. I, so, you know, for $2, I ordered another one. And it's in solid black. So instead of this red, it comes in solid black. So now I've got a really well-writing nib um, and section piece here. Um, plus I got another um, uh, international standard converter along with it for $2 delivered to the house. So, you know, that's where those come in uh, fairly inexpensively. Uh, a Hero 901. 
it, it takes any ink so far that I put into it, including that cheap hero ink that I put in that blue black. It takes it or writes fairly well. So those are some of the, the cheaper ones. Um, if you wanted to step up to a Lamy Safari, um, <coughs> this one goes like I, I was showing you earlier, um, upper twenties to forty dollars or so. So I can't complain about that. Um, a Pelican Twist. Um, I can't show you that right now because my wife confiscated it within an hour of my receiving it. She liked it so much, so she's got that. I've been asked about next level pens, all right? <sighs> Once I've gotten to that far um, and I like what I've got, some recommendations. Well, I showed you my Waterman uh, that I like. The Lamy 2000 is, if, if you're a collector, you probably have a Lamy 2000 in your collection. Uh, Lamy has a nice little mackerel on, supposedly is what they call this. Um, this pen here, you can see up to $169, I've seen it. I paid $90 for mine. Um, so if you're looking for uh, a pen that writes very, very well, however, caveat, what I found with mine, it did not like that bottle of Hero ink whatsoever. So not every pen likes every ink, or not every pen likes the ink I had. I didn't have a lot of bottled ink. Why? Because I had a pen that ate everything I ever put into it, and I thought I figured every pen. That's ignorance will do that for you. you know, just it's one of those things. I just had to learn that. Um, I learned also about uh, let's see another pen that I found that I kind of liked. Uh, let me find it. That's not it. Um, the Cross Bailey. If uh, cross pens, I've had cross pens for years. Everybody, just about everybody's had a cross pen at one time or a ballpoint. Uh, one job, I was required to use a cross pen in my uniform pocket. Um, and, but, you know, they make decent um, fountain pens. Some people may consider this, uh, you know, an entry level pen. I paid 20 bucks for it on sale. 20 bucks for a pen. It writes well. Um, it takes proprietary converter not real happy about that but still um, a Schaefer 100 I've got a Schaefer 100 right here and again um, you know, I've got just a cartridge that it came with in this it writes fairly well and I think I paid 25 bucks for it something like that so I can't complain about those do you get what you pay for when you buy pens um, translation are the more expensive pens worth the money well maybe maybe not some cheap pens actually do very well I told you that Jin Hao 599 writes okay some of my Jin Hao's okay um, some not so much every pen is gonna have its own personality every pen in every manufacturer is going to be different I've got some Chinese pen made pens here that I'm not happy with. Um, this one here wrote very well when I had it inked up, but it also dries up pretty quickly. I, get, I don't know if it's because of the way the cap fits on it or what. Um, wasn't all that impressed with it. It's got the aspirator to it too, and I hate that. Um, but some pens I've purchased have done well, and some not so much. i uh, give you a, a few examples if I can find them. Eh, no, like right here. Some pens were worth exactly what I paid for them. 99 cents. It sucks. It's an A-how. The only good thing that came out of that are some cartridges that came along with it where I didn't have to buy them uh, for another pen that, that fit another pen. <laughs> That's And, uh, you know, I can't complain about that. Um, more expensive pens can be disappointing. Here's one. I got a Mont Blanc 32. I told you earlier, I don't like fine nibs so much. It's got a very fine nib. And it writes okay. I mean, it, every time I pick it up and go to use it, it's worked well. It's a Mont Blanc. I have other Mont Blancs that I really want to get. The 149 is still on my hit list. Um, but this one was recommended actually by a pen collector. And uh, so I figured I'll go ahead and give it a try. And it's been okay. I mean, it's a solid writer. It's just not my favorite. You know, if I want to, it, it does match like a suit that I have very well. 
So just the other night, I used it when I went out to dinner with my wife at a nice restaurant because it fit very well and looked very good with the suit that I was wearing. Some more expensive pens have absolutely delighted me. Um, I told you I like Waterman. This Waterman Karen that I've shown on a previous video. I read a few reviews, saw a few videos on it, and I saw some people talk about how wonderful they were. And they were in like the gunmetal um, patterned um, silver. That didn't impress me. But I saw this color right here. I saw this blue with the gold trim. And I fell in lust immediately. And so I put some, I actually bought this one on eBay. And because I knew what I was looking for, I knew the quality that I was looking for, I knew how much I was willing to pay, I knew how much these were going for retail brand new, I bought this one used, got it significantly cheaper, about half the price of, of, of brand new ones, um, and I inked it up, and I was in love. So smooth. I love this pen. This is probably my favorite pen of all the ones I own. So, um, you know, more expensive pen. It impressed me. The Lamy 2000. Once I put in the right ink, or um, a decent ink, it worked great. So, um, Esterbrook. I showed you that one. Once I wrote with it, inked it up with a good ink, and used it, I was like, oh, wow, holy crap. The only thing I, I did do is um, I bought a new nib, because Esterbrook has a ton of nibs that they used to use. They're out of business now. The, that, that pen's from the 1940s. Um, and I got some replacement nibs on the way. So I'm going to try a medium nib that's brand new out of the box, and I'll see if um, it writes better than what it is. It still writes well, but there's, every once in a while there's a little bit of skip. And I'm rather than try to fine-tune the fine, I'm thinking about just putting in a medium and see how it goes. I was asked about paper. Here's my philosophy on paper. I buy what I use. And I write on what I write on. This is a notepad that you can get at Staples. You know, this Sam's Club. You know, that kind of thing. I write on these for work. This is what I use. Um, I've got a, a little prayer notebook that my dog chewed on. I write in it, but, you know, it's got still some blank pages, but I've got pages that I've written on in here with some of my pens, um, and they write okay, you know. Um, I work with some projects where I've got to document things, so composition books. Um, I use notepads that I get sent, um, and I've gotten from, oh, my HVAC contractor. Every time they come by, they leave me pads. That's the kind of stuff I write with on a daily basis, you know. Um, Post-it notes for my job. Uh, notepads from a hotel that I was using uh, while I was there. My philosophy is write on what you're going to use. I don't own Rhodia paper. I'll probably pick some up when I'm at the, the pen show just to have it and see how well it works. Here's what I will say. Some pens actually do better on some other notebooks. Like this. This is just an old notebook. I used to own a book business, by the way, and I'd buy books by the truckload. And I'd, you'd be surprised at some of the stuff that I'd find. Um, but, you know, this paper is actually a quality paper. And some pens that didn't write so well, um, for instance, uh, oh, here's a good one. This little um, Oto, little dinky pen, like this. A $10 Oto pen. Um, it's a pocket pen, right? Well, most of the pen is cap, but you post it together, it actually does fairly well. About almost a standard length, normal length pen. It didn't write so well on a notepad. Uh, my wife tried writing with it, and I even had that post-it note or that piece of paper right still right here on, on a post-it pad. She wasn't impressed with it, but when I wrote in, you know, this that had a little better paper, it actually wrote better. So yes. Uh, the paper that you're going to be writing with can affect how it looks, but personally, I'm not going to invest and always write on Rhodia paper because I'm not going to spend that much to do my work. You know, uh, 
I've supported St. Jude, so they send me some stuff. The Wounded Warrior Project, I've supported them in the past. They keep sending me notepads. I've got a stack of notepads up here behind me, uh, actually right up here on my desk, that um, f family has given me and that we've collected over the years. So that's normally what I'm going to be writing on, so I'm not big on having to have nice expensive paper for writing samples, that kind of thing. Uh, but I do understand that some paper is better than others. Do you have any general advice or in lessons learned? Well, let's deal with the lessons learned uh, first. Not every pen likes every ink. I've given you that one before. You may not like the same pen as others. A good example was that uh, Mont Blanc. One collector um, said he loves his Mont Blanc 32 and likes it better than the Mont Blanc 149. So, um, all right, I went ahead and got it. Uh, one person loves the Waterman Corinne. Someone else didn't like it. Um, I've had pens here, some Jin Hao's. Some guys hate Jin Hao's. I'm tired of these cheap Chinese pens. Some of them are pretty nice. <clears throat> I think er pretty much everybody has agreed on the Lamy, uh, that I, and pretty much everybody has agreed on, like, the Metropolitan. Um, I personally, so far, like I said, I like Waterman. Every Waterman I've touched, I own three of them now. Loved them. Esther books. I never hear anybody really talk about Esther books until I started to do a research into them and found that some people love old Esther book pens. Well, the more I use them, the more I like them too. Um, so find out what you like. That's why I, I suggest you, you try pens. Find somebody you know that is in, may have a collection of fountain pens. Um, and uh, you can try them. I've offered to people that I know that asked me about pens. I said, you are welcome to come and try any and all pens that I own. Come, sit down, get a notepad, start writing with them, and see what ones you like and what ones you don't, and uh, go from there. And that way you know kind of what to shoot for, and you know how to start. Uh, try different inks. Here's something that I learned. Yes, not all inks are equal. You got those two bottled inks. I don't own a lot of bottled ink. And like I said, the reason was because most of my work is done here in my office. And I don't go elsewhere necessarily when I'm using them, except, you know, I'll take them when I travel. Everywhere I go now, I bring a pen. Um, but let's say I uh, didn't like that Hero ink, so I bought some Diamine um, Onyx Black ink. Ooh, boy, that made my Lamy write a whole lot better. All right. Um, but, and Yoda here, um, I've got a fistful of different inks. You know, I've got reds, purples, browns, greens, blacks, blue inks uh, from um, different manufacturers. Like, there's a Diamine Apple Glory I haven't tried. And uh, here's a Wild Strawberry that I have tried. Um, you know, some inks are going to be um, better. Oh, the Aubergine. I really like that. That's in my Couture pen. Um, so I've got all those that I keep in here. And my advice... Different companies offer um, pens uh, or inks in little little vials, like I was just showing you. Um, Goulet Pens has a tremendous selection of them, uh, and they're like a dollar and a quarter, a dollar fifty per little vial. Not every pen likes to be filled with those. I found that out the hard way. <laughs> uh, here's a good example: my Waterman Karen does not like being filled out of one of those, so I'm going to fill it from the bottle. And I just happen to have this one with um, Waterman ink, so. All right, some of uh, the other things that I, I've got for you, uh, some general advice that I have. Like I said, there's going to be a learning curve. I didn't know much about pens. All I knew about fountain pens was this El Cheapo. It took cartridges. This one, okay, I put cartridges in it, and then I had to learn how to use a fountain pen converter in order to draw ink into it. Uh, and I had to learn as I went that about inks, not uh, what inks are good, what inks stink. Um, I read a lot of reviews. Here's my advice to you. Look online. There are YouTube channels to which I subscribe um, by some great reviewers. And if you guys want to know what they are, comment. And I'll, I'll send you some um, of their links as well. Some great guys out there, very knowledgeable. We're all learning the same way I did 
uh, essentially, which is why I'm making some of this uh, to hopefully you can make a lot of shortcuts <laughs> to a lot of it, not have to discover it. If you are on the, on the process of discovery in your web browser, bookmark a lot of stuff. Make a little favorites uh, folder in your web browser. I've got one that just says pens, and under it I've got all these different pen stores. I've got all these um, different pen manufacturers. I've got pen forums. I've got YouTube groups um, for pens. I've got um, YouTube video channels bookmarked. Um, I have all kinds of blogs, uh, bloggers who do stuff on pens. And every time I run across another website or another potential distributor through which I can purchase, I'll bookmark that stuff so I keep it. Um, so. Uh, don't be afraid to bookmark stuff and, and just put it all in, in a nice little folder and, and keep it for yourself. That you can always go back and look. There's some that I go to all the time. Um, as a matter of fact, when I go to my browser, if I hit G, uh, it'll probably take me uh, auto populate goulaypens.com because I go there often and I look. And I check out inks. So visit these sites often. Um, Pen Hero may have a bunch of information for you that you can have as well. And But. Um, in a nutshell, that, that's what I've got, guys. Um, some of the stuff that I learned, I, I learned on my own, did a lot of research, a lot of time viewing videos, reading. As with anything, when I learned about firearms and collecting and uh, getting a collector's license, I did a lot of reading. Uh, this is no different. It's just, not, it's just like any other hobby. You learn. Some of it's been frustrating. Some of it's been fun. Um, I've enjoyed some of it. I've been fighting with some pens, and I fell in love with others. There's some I despise. Uh, there's some that I don't ever want to use again that I'll probably put up um, after they've been flushed out and clean, you know, dried out. I'll probably never use them again just because I don't like them. Uh, and it cost me a few bucks to find out. Fortunately, it didn't cost me hundreds and hundreds of dollars to find out. So it doesn't have to be expensive. It can be fun. The, the coolest thing to me is the knowledge that I've picked up so far along the way. And hopefully I'll meet a lot of folks uh, at some of the uh, pen shows. Never been to a pen show in my life. Been to all kinds of gun shows. Used to go to them all the time. Um, and just like any other trade show, uh, just like a gun show, it's for pens. <laughs> who, who thought, you know? Who knew? Uh, so anyway, um, you'll learn a few things along the way too. So questions you've got, hit, hit me in the comments down below, and uh, I'll answer some of them. I'll respond to them. I'm pretty good about that. And uh, I'll be glad to um, turn you on to sources of information because I am certainly no expert. Uh, but I do know people who are, that I can find them online, and uh, some who I follow. So hey, bon chance.